I have a question for my fellow nerds. How many of you have spent days, weeks, or even months perfecting a multicade system only to have one of your friends come over, try the only game you haven't configured yet, and this happens? Yo, this shit's broke, Bob. If that strikes a nerve with you, stick with me, because I'll show you how to significantly decrease the chance of that happening if you're using a Mr. FPGA system to power your multicade. Just a few quick notes before we begin. First, everything that I show in this video involves software configuration, so just make sure that your mister is already set up and connected to your hardware and working before you begin. But a huge advantage of this being only software configuration is that if you're not sure if this is something you want to do with your setup, just grab any 4GB or larger microSD card that you have lying around, give this a try, and if you don't like the outcome, just eject it, put your other one back in, and there are zero permanent changes. It'll just go right back to the way that you had it. Also, while a lot of these tips were really designed for people with dedicated, vertically-oriented setups, I do think that a lot of the tips shown would really apply to almost anybody who wants to have a dedicated Mr. Arcade setup. So maybe stick with me and wait to the end just to see the examples and see if, even if you don't want to do all of the things that I've done, maybe there's at least a couple of tips that would make your workflow and setup a little bit easier. But enough rambling, let's jump in and check out how I'm working these things. All right, so starting us off, I am going to use the nerd method for clearing out a micro SD card. If you want to use the much easier method, check out the other video I did. But I am just going to go and launch disk part on Windows. Then I'm going to select list disk so it shows all of the different drives that are available on your computer. And it's almost always the last one, but since this is a four gigabyte card, this 3823 megabytes one seems like it's it. So we're going to select disk four and then just hit clean. And that basically destroys the entire thing, which is why this is a nerds only method. I would not suggest this for beginners. Uh, then you're gonna wanna go and download Mr. Fusion, whatever the latest version of that is. And uh, just download that here. I'm gonna drop that right on desktop. Uh, for whatever reason, um, you don't, uh, you just end up getting the zip file, just double click on it pretty much every single OS, all you have to do is double click to get it. And to image it, I'm not gonna use Win32 Disk Imager. You could use whatever you'd like. Uh, I just would suggest hitting Run as Administrator. Select the image that you just downloaded and hit Write. Oh, and double check that it is the correct micro SD card. Okay, after that's done, all you have to do is exit out of here and then eject the micro SD card. After taking out your micro SD card, put it into your mister and then connect it up to an HDMI source. You probably don't have to, but it just makes all this stuff way easier. So connect via HDMI, power on the mister and let Mr. Fusion run. There's basically nothing to do other than verify that it ends and you're back up at the main title screen. And at that point, power off your mister, take out the micro SD card and put it back into your PC. You're gonna see all of these uh, windows pop up saying, do you want to format, say no to all of them. That's basically just saying that it found operating systems that weren't formatted for Linux. So at this point, then you're gonna to wanna to download the update all script from the Ypsilon and just go into latest releases, download the zip file, and then just open it up. And then you could drag that to your desktop. Once again, just double click on the zip file if that's not uh, if it doesn't automatically extract. Then you're gonna to wanna to go into the strips direct, scripts directory and dump that file right into it. And there's a few more things that you wanna do. First, on the root, you're gonna to wanna to create a directory called games, and then create your two arcade directories, mame and then hb mame. This is where you put all of the ROMs that you've collected in order to actually play these games. So that's a step that you don't normally need to do, but since we're limiting the installation, that's definitely what you would need. Uh, also, do you wanna, and here's really where this strays from the main Mr. installation. You're gonna wanna create a file that's downloader.ini right on the root of the Mr. Then edit it 
and paste in the code that I put in the main write up for this. And what this is going to do is only download arcade cores, nothing else whatsoever. So this will save space on your SD card. This will save time downloading, but also it'll make sure that you only have those to choose from, which reduces the clutter. I would also open that back up to double check that it saves when you're done. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to do updating via Wi-Fi, you're going to go into the Linux directory, open up uh, this file right here, the WPA supplicant.config, open that with Notepad or Notepad, Notepad++ and add your SSID and password there. I normally like to do all of this stuff through Ethernet, but if you were going to do that, then you, could, you would just rename it by removing the underscore, saving your file with your info in it, and that's it. Then when you're done, eject it and plug it back into your mister into an HDMI monitor. Okay, once Mr. is booted, make sure that you see the network emblem appear on the top toolbar. It has to be connected to the network in order for this to happen. You'll see either the LAN or Wi-Fi logo pop up as soon as it's connected. You can see the LAN logo here, so then just hit escape and go into the scripts directory. And then I would just say yes and don't ask again because that's just a basic warning. Then go into update all. And as it first boots, you'll notice it'll say press up to enter menu. And I highly recommend doing this the first time you run it. You only need to do this once and then you'll never need to worry about this again. But basically enter the menu and then select whatever option that you think is relevant to you. For me personally, I am a Patreon subscriber of both Hotego and the Ypsilon, the creator of this update all version 2.0 script. So I'm going to enable all of those Patreon specific options. And I'm also going to go through and on this machine, really tweak it for a dedicated arcade setup. The way I have my main mister set up is I basically want every option possible that affects all of the peripherals or whatever else that I'm using. But for this build, since it's going to be arcade only, I'm not going to get the console biases, uh, BIOSes. There's a few other things that you probably don't need, but basically just go through each step, check what you want, and then hit save and then run it and just wait for it to do its thing. Now, depending on your internet speed and a whole bunch of other things, this could take hours, this could take a few moments. So basically at this point, just let it do its thing and walk away. Okay, so after this runs, you're gonna end up back at the main screen. And as you can see, now you have only the arcade directory, which is exactly what I personally want for certain dedicated arcade cabs. And the only thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just open it up and pick any game that you'd like to just test and make sure that everything works. So I'm gonna grab uh, Vampire Savior and just make sure that everything boots. If it doesn't, you probably copied the games to, uh, wrong to the improper folder. Maybe the game, uh, the MAME or HB MAME folder you created could potentially have been misspelled or something like that. But basically, as long as you've loaded your ROMs correctly and as long as update all is completed, everything should work. The only thing at that point that might be different is just any other kind of settings or if update all blipped because your network connection dropped. So if you're not at this point, check your games and then also rerun update all. And if you are at this point, you could just kind of call it a day and use it as is, but come on, what fun is that? This is the retro RGB channel. We got to nerd out way more, especially if you're using a Tate Mr. setup. So even though the Mr. is currently in a state that's working fine, I strongly recommend doing a whole bunch more to it. And the first thing is definitely going to be editing the Mr. INI file. So place your Mr. SD card back into your PC. Yes, sure, you could probably log in remotely, but I just think it's easier to do this. Cancel all of the prompts that come up and then check out the Mr. example INI. You could just copy and then paste that right here and just rename that to mister.ini and then you're going to want to right click on it and hit edit. I prefer to edit it with notepad plus plus but I'm going to show basic notepad here just because it'll be easier for anybody else who doesn't have that installed. So the first thing that I think people should at least consider looking into is boot last core. 
So if you're using a brand new Mr. Build, all you have to do is uncomment that. And if your Mr. for whatever reason has an older Mr. INI file, you could probably just copy and paste this entire thing from the GitHub directly into it. However, this will boot the last arcade game, or in fact, the last core that was played. But if you have an arcade game that you played, that means when you power on your Mr., it'll just go back to playing that last game. So it'll kind of feel more like an arcade machine. It won't be sitting at a menu. It'll be sitting at whatever game you last played. So that one's kind of neat. There's a few other things you're going to want to go through in your Mr. INI file, but most of them are going to be related to the hardware that you use. So if you have any analog out options, you might need to set any of these, any kind of HDMI audio options. But there are a few other things that I think might be worth going through. One of them that I always set is the OSD timeout because I like to set it to timeout quicker just so there's less chance of burn in if I have to leave a CRT on. And also video modes are something that you might want to just worry about. If you're doing HDMI gaming through this, then obviously set it to whatever mode your monitor is. If you're just streaming, you could leave it at whatever your normal stream resolutions are. That's totally up to you. Uh, for VSync Adjust, if you're gaming on an HDMI monitor, try setting it to two for low latency mode. Uh, if it works, great. If not, you're going to have to back it up to one or zero in order to buffer a little bit. And that's basically it. Just go through the Mr. I and I file, see if there's anything else that's related directly to your setup. But if not, then you're pretty much done with that. I would take a moment just to check out all the options, though, because you never know what you might find, especially if you have some of these extra peripherals or anything like that. Next up is something that's going to be a huge help for anybody with a dedicated arcade setup, and it might even be something that just general Mr. users might be interested in. But developer Wizzo has created a long list of very awesome scripts, but the one that I've been using a lot lately, lately is the favorites script. So I'll leave a link to everything Wizzo does in the description, but for now, just click on favorites.sh and then download that and copy that to the scripts directory of your Mr. SD card. After your Mr. is booted back to the main menu, hit escape, go into scripts and run the favorite script. You don't need to be connected to the internet for this. You just need to have a keyboard connected. And at least for the first time, you'll probably want HDMI connected to set this up, but then hit add new favorite and scroll down to whichever game you would like. Now, let's just pretend that I went through the trouble of doing all the button mapping and tweaking for Vampire Savior, and we confirmed that it's working perfectly. So we're going to scroll down to that and then very simply just hit select. I want to put it in the top level. You could put it in a favorites directory if you'd like, but I'm going to put it right in the top level, hit OK, and then we'll just exit back to the front front menu. You see it uh, says press any key to continue. And now that game is directly on the main menu. But there's a little bit more if you're using a CRT and there's a few other things that you're going to want to check out. So here's what happens if you use an analog CRT monitor that's 15 kilohertz, so a 240p or 480i monitor, and you try to run any of these scripts. You get this message, but what it tells you to do doesn't exactly work the way you would expect. I'll show an example, but do not do this because this will not fix it. I'm just kind of showing you what will happen. So we're going to set frame buffer terminal to zero, just like it said in the message. We're going to e eject the card, go back into the mister and try again. And this time it bounces back to the menu. And even in a different script, update all, it still bounces back to the menu. So this is one of the rare moments that the instructions that you see on screen aren't actually the correct fix. Now, we could fix this using the Mr. INI file, but I do want to make a quick note that if you're somebody with a setup that has a CRT based arcade machine, but you always have an HDMI connection, whether that's your capture card or a secondary monitor, then you might not even need to do this at all. You could just access any of those scripts via HDMI and never use the CRT. But if you're like me and you have dedicated CRT setups. Here's a really awesome fix that enables some other very cool options as well. So scroll down to the very bottom of your Mr. I and I file and paste the code that I have included in the post that corresponds with this video. And what this does is create menu brackets that any option you add below it will only have those options active when the main menu is booted. And the moment you boot a core, everything goes back to normal.
So adding these should take care of a few things. First of all, it'll add the buffer needed to display everything on screen, but this will also give you a 1280 pixel wide by 240 pixel tall analog video output, on, and actually on both the HDMI and the analog outputs. Now, since this is still a 240 pixel high 15 kilohertz signal, pretty much every CRT out there will just think this is a standard 15 kilohertz signal. And, but the fact that it's a 1280 wide resolution will fool your mister into thinking there's enough resolution available in order to see what's on screen. Now, the downside of this is it'll stretch your HDMI output only when you're in the menu, never after a core is booted. But I, I think there's way too many advantages to this for, for that not to be an issue. The only other few things to add are I had one Astro City cabinet that required me to add VSync adjust equals one. I didn't leave that as the normal code because I only needed it on that one. So you're gonna wanna add that in there only if you have any kind of sync issues. And in fact, if you have the boot last core option on, that would be a great way to test because if you power on the arcade machine and you don't get any video at all until the core boots, then you know that this mode is not compatible and you'll have to add VSync or something else. Also, any other option that you want related to the menu should be here too. So uh, OSD timeout or rotation or anything like this needs to be copied and pasted here as well. It needs to be both as the menu settings and as the core settings. But let me show you some examples of how this only affects the menu and not after you've booted the cores. So really, even though the menu looks ugly, you got nothing to worry about. But let me show you examples of how it only affects the menu of the HDMI output, as well as some of its advantages. So you'll see here when I have my capture card connected, it is a very wide and very short image because that's the resolution that we're telling it to send out of both outputs via the HDMI menu. But even just loading it up in OBS might be able to stretch this. So a really great trick that you might be able to use is just simply set up OBS for your stream. So for example, let's just say that you plan on streaming in 1080p. All you need to do is set up your capture card for 1080p, which is probably the default on this one, and it'll automatically stretch it. And yes, this will look very soft because now you're soft stretching vertically to the full resolution of your screen. In fact, you're stretching in all directions if you're doing a 1080p stream. But I got to keep saying this will only affect the menu because those options in the INI file only control this part of the menu. The moment that you boot your core, everything goes back to, to normal and to the rest of the settings in the INI file. But now I'd like to show you the advantages of doing it this way, as well as show you some examples of how it looks after you've booted the core. After booting, I suggest the first thing you do is hit F1 to change the background. And that is the first thing that changing that menu option and adding a dedicated menu to your CRT side will change, is the ability to do just hit F1 and select menus. Now, why would you need to do this at all? Well, if you're running the HDMI output to a capture card for streaming, you probably noticed how terrible this screen looked in this entire video, and it's because of that CRT fuzz look. Capture cards, and especially compression algorithms, can't stand it and they freak out whenever you set it to that. So also it's a pretty cool benefit of having all of the colors available on screen for this. So when you boot up your arcade machine, you know everything's working right. Now the other benefit is if we go into the favorite script, now we can see it. And this script might not be visible depending on the quality of your CRT or the size. However, I have a very beat up 19 inch CRT in the current arcade machine that I'm testing. And while you could barely see this, you definitely can. So you're able to just go through, hit add new favorite, and you can see how squished everything looks here. But I think that's totally okay because I still think this is less work than having to go through and either connect an HDMI device every time you want to access it or, or try to find a different method. So I really like this a lot. And it also enables being able to see basically any other scripts. So you could go in to update all and you could actually view that here as well. Now, once again, the menu and this screen, any of the database screens like this are going to be squished and ugly, especially on stream. But that's not really the point. Once you boot your game, everything else is going to run properly. So we're going to just demonstrate that now real quick by going back into it, going back into the main page and reloading Vampire Savior 2. 
it will automatically change the resolution back to the correct 1080p and the game boots as normal. So if you have a normal horizontally oriented arcade machine, I think you could stop now. I think everything's awesome. You could have your favorites listed on your main screen. You have access to them, all the favorites and update all menu through your dedicated CRT cabinet. And of course, also you have, still have the ability to stream at whatever resolution you think is right for your setup. However, if you have a vertically oriented machine, there's a few more steps that I think you should take the time to do. This last part of the configuration is for people that have dedicated vertical setups that will never be positioned horizontally. So if you're somebody that has a flat panel monitor that rotates, then I would just leave everything as is and just simply rotate it after your core is loaded. Same if you're one of the very lucky few that has a CRT setup that's able to rotate. However, if you're like me and you have a setup that will always only be vertically oriented, the stuff I'm about to show is going to be a massive help and I really think it's gonna streamline your entire setup and workflow. So let's take a look. So let's get back to our Mr. I and I file. And all you need to do is change OSD rotate to one, then copy that and put that back underneath the menu only settings if you're using a CRT. Obviously this OSD rotation should be done regardless if you're using a CRT or a flat panel, you just need to add the second one if you have that dedicated menu option. And of course, if you boot your mister and the uh, on-screen display and menu are upside down, just go back and set them both to two. I know that my machine's properly oriented with the one setting, so that's it, just hit save. But there's one more pretty cool thing we could do thanks to developer Alex Upton. We could use his Vert Arcade only script and all you need to do is grab the vert arcade only install file. Now, if you're a developer yourself and you want to mess with some of the different options Alex has, then I would kind of go through and check that out, but I want to make this easy for everybody. So I'm just going to take that file, drop it in the scripts directory and just ensure once again, that it's .sh. It didn't automatically add a .txt file and then just eject your SD card and go back to your mister. Now, after you boot your mister, just go into the scripts directory and then run the script that you just installed and you should see it run. It could take a while because it's going to go through every single arcade file you have, but basically just let it run and wait till it reboots back to the main menu. And now what you have is just about the easiest setup you could imagine. You have on the front page, all of your favorites, everything that you've already configured that you know for a fact will work, that the button mappings work right, that it's centered on your display. And because of Alex's script, now you'll have one directory that is instant access to every single vertically oriented game. So you don't have to mess with sub menus, which to be honest, I really like in dual setups. I think it's awesome having everything listed under the arcade directory and having all the organizational folders. But if it's only a Tate setup, then you have everything you need right here. Although if you did need to somehow search through others, you have that right there as well. But I think this workflow right here is absolutely the most ideal for anyone who has a dedicated vertically oriented setup. Now, the only thing that you'll need to note if you're using the Vert Arcade script is when you go to update your mister, only use the Vert Arcade only update file. Do not use update or update all. Now, worse comes to worse, if you do run either of those, you'll just have to go back and rerun this one. But this also calls out the Ypsilon's update, update all script. It just does so in a way that it only downloads vertically oriented arcade files. So just, it's kind of a, a not a too big deal if you, if you forget it, but try to remember, only use vert arcade only update from now on if you have the dedicated Tate setup and you want to maintain this menu system of having everything listed right there. Okay, now it's time for the demo. So you'll know why all of that work was worth doing. The one thing I'll note is you're going to still need a keyboard connected to map all of your controls. But once you've done the main mapping, if you have it wired the way I have with coin buttons direct wired here and a dedicated OSD button, then you actually probably won't need a keyboard anymore just for arcade stuff, which I think is a pretty big bonus if you have multiple arcade machines or if you just want 
a standard arcade feel and experience. So the only thing you have to do to get started is to go and define the joystick buttons. You'll need the keyboard set up for that, and that's it. Also, you'll probably noticed that the OSD timed itself out, and that's the setting that I showed before, because for this monitor, I chose an all black background, so when the OSD times out, I don't have to worry about burn-in or anything like that, so I could run any scripts or do anything remotely from it while it's going, but here's the basic setup. Now, regardless if it's Tate or standard orientation, I love this for dedicated arcade setups. I have my pre-configured arcade games already on the main menu. So anybody that selects any one of these, all you have to do is know that this is start, there's some buttons and that's coin and that's it. But I have access to every single arcade game in here. And the very cool thing for people with vertically oriented setups like this one, here's Alex's Tate directory that has absolutely every vertically oriented game. So I'm gonna go through and calibrate one of these games and kind of show the whole process of how I get a game from running it from the first time to getting, getting it on the main menu. So a quick note, if you're not used to working with arcade boards, it's very normal to see weird stuff like this upon boot. It's just doing its checks, but uh, just be patient basically when loading any arcade course. But we're gonna start out by going in and checking the video settings, because as you can see, this is upside down. Sometimes you'll see rotate options right from the screen. This one must obviously be talking about the HDMI. So then always check the dip switch settings if you're doing a vertical game. That worked perfectly right here. Sometimes, uh, like with Dodon Pachi, you have to go through and enter the test mode and do it through the arcade board's own test menu, but this core seems to be working great, so we're just going to reset to apply. The other thing you might notice is checking the cutoff on each side. Now, not all arcade games are gonna fill all sides, but keep in mind that when these were made, each board was calibrated for each arcade machine, or even in the multis like this, it was still one at a time, so the arcade operator could do it. So you're basically gonna have to do that yourself, but luckily most of these cores have video settings where you could do exactly that. So you could decide where it's centered uh, or in a case where you can't really center it, just make sure that you get rid of uh, any of the blank spots. So you have overscan on all sides. That looks pretty awesome. You can see there's still overscan and cutoff, but almost all games from the analog era had that. So that's, uh, that's set for the centering. You can set any of the audio settings you want. And now we're gonna go in and define the buttons. And here's a couple other cool tricks I'd like to share. So define buttons, right, left, down, up. I'm gonna put shot on button two. I'll explain why in a second, but shot, bomb. I don't want a kill player button, so I'm gonna tap OSD to skip. If you have a dedicated OSD button or if you're using the one on the mister itself, you could do this. I'm not sure if it works if it's a double button, but I'm just gonna tap that. I'm gonna add start, coin. I'll put pause over here. And here's the other trick that I like to show. Do you wanna set up alternative buttons? Yes. So we'll skip right, left, down, and up, because we already mapped those. I'm gonna put shot on button one as well. And then I could just skip through the rest of these. And that's it. Now when you're done, you could just go into save settings and now all of the settings for this game would be saved. So uh, let's go back. I'll show you why I did the double button at the very end, but let's reboot this machine and go into the favorite script. Now, as you can see, it's rotated, which is fine because you just turn your head and it's not super easy to see, but you could definitely see it. So I'm just gonna go add new favorite. I'm gonna go into the arcade directory and then I'm gonna scroll down to, oops, sometimes it's a little finicky with the arcade stick, but then I'm gonna scroll down to Truxton 2. Okay, so now that we found the game that we're looking for, uh, here is Truxton 2, it's the one I just loaded. So we're gonna click on this, hit select, okay and exit, just like I showed before through the capture. Now I'm going to, heck, I'll just do a full cold reboot just to show exactly what would happen upon boot. So as you can see, here is Truxton 2, the last core that we booted, or that we booted. It is on the main menu. And now once we load it, everything is going to be pre-configured. We don't have to go through any of those settings ever again, which I think is always a pretty cool option and kind of, solves the issue that I showed at the very opening of this video of what happens if your friends come over and just start playing on your arcade machine. 
So I'm going to add a couple of coins, hit start, and start the game out. And here's the final thing that I want to show. So the game is centered, all of your settings, it's, uh, it's correctly oriented, all of the settings are there. But this game seems to have pretty decent default auto fire. I'm just holding one button. But what about the games that don't? Hold down whichever button you'd like and tap the OSD button and you can see auto fire has been enabled. So while in this particular game, I probably chose the worst example for it, um, now all you have to do is hit auto fire, but there are plenty of games, especially shooters, where single fire allows for a charge. So you wouldn't actually want only one button having auto fire. You still want the ability to let go and charge. So while it's pretty embarrassing that I used the wrong game to demo it, hopefully you'll still get the idea because everything else, bomb, pause, everything is mapped correctly. So that's basically it. Here's the full workflow of why you would want to go through all that trouble. But as you can see, this feels like an arcade machine. This, I, I don't have to connect my keyboard. Everything can be updated right through the Wi-Fi, and I don't have to worry about anything else. So hopefully you enjoy this, and hopefully you'd be able to take at least some of the things I showed in this setup and apply it to your own. Hopefully this video was a help for anybody with a dedicated Mr. Arcade setup, regardless if they're using a CRT or a flat panel monitor. The one thing I would like to do a follow-up video on at some point in the future is if there's a way to launch console games directly from a main menu link like I showed with arcade games. Because while there aren't many, there are definitely a few console games that are vertically oriented that I think it would be really cool to have links directly on the main menu that go directly into the game without having to boot a core and then load the individual ROM afterwards. So if I ever figure out how to do that, I'll do a follow-up video. But for now, hopefully this was a help, especially for people with vertically oriented setups, because that could have been a little bit tricky up until some of these things all came together. But anyway, if you liked this video, and especially if you like the Mr. Project, please consider supporting anybody that helps contribute to the project. I'll leave a couple of links to the people that helped out with this one. Shout out to everybody and how patient and awesome they always are with me. But really, if you have a developer that you follow and you appreciate their work and you have the ability to support them, please consider it. Because without any of your support, none of these amazing things would be able to happen. So thank you all very much for your time, and I'll see you next time.